You're listening to the Substation Gaming Podcast. I'm Lucos. With me, I have Black Chestnut. Hello. And Ricola. Hi. And today we're going over day two of E3. More specifically, Xbox and Square Enix. But yeah, let's jump right into this, guys. You guys want to start with Square Enix? Yeah, let's do Square Enix first. Well, yeah. uh, so let's talk about um, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. Game. Yeah. yeah. That was the first thing they showed off. They uh, basically went. Uh, with I mean, the... I. Go ahead. I'm madly interested in it compared to Avengers, which I had zero interest in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I for, could, for uh, one, I could say the same. Yeah, for one, that game kind of flopped the Avengers one, but this one they went with the same idea they went with the Avengers one, where they gave us like the comic book style instead of the movie style of the characters. Actually, you know, I don't think it's even the comic book style completely. It's just legally distinct from yeah. the actors that the movie has. Yeah, right. it's like it's like the one joke in fucking Spaceballs. It's like you got their stunt doubles, you idiots. <laughs> right. But um, besides that, I mean, they look pretty cool for alternative skins, I guess you can say. Yeah. I mean, I'm just happy it's not like a live service. Yeah. It's like, like a grind fast flashy life. thing. You know, it's like a single player adventure game with Guardians of the Galaxy. Which I feel like is what it should have been. Yeah. Like all those, if they're gonna make those superhero movies, I feel like they should make them into story games because it'd be a lot. I'd rather them instead of making it into like an open world grind fest like Destiny or something, make it to the point where you can play each character in their very own story. Like yeah. that would be I think something that's cool. What most people definitely wanted, it, which is why I think most people were disappointed with the Avengers game. Right. Because they were they were hoping for something along the lines of like Sony Spider Man, you know? Yeah. Spider Man exactly. is like right. <laughs> yeah, I feel like most people were expecting something along those lines, and that's not really what anybody got. Oh, to be fair, Spider-Man is an open world. Yeah, yeah but it's different. It's, it's uh, still his single... Spider-Man to be in an open world, though, because yeah. the whole point is that your Spider-Man is swinging around, you know? And yeah, it's his fun. own game, period. Like, yeah. it's just Spider-Man. It's, but... it's Spider-Man is like a single-player, you know, like action-adventure game. It's not, It's know... Yeah, it's an open-world action-adventure game. It's not a live service, you know, you play through it, you play through the campaign, you get to the end, you know. It's not replay mission 12, 20 times in order to unlock the skin you want, or pay 25 bucks for it, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, it looks cool. Um, yeah. Hopefully they, they take the approach. Looks from what, for Yeah, from what we've seen, it looks like it's going to be that story mode game. Yeah. Let's hope it sticks yeah, I, with that. Be- I'm sure it'll be better than Avengers, but you know that's also like such a low bar. Yeah. You but honestly, remember from Avengers, agreeable grunt. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I don't. Luca, well, okay, well, if you don't know, they're they um, you know, they have like placeholder like voice lines where like a, a robot voice or something will just like right, say right. like, and it'll voices. be like the sub like the closed captions, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, there's a scene where Hulk just says agreeable grunt. In like a text speech, like <laughs> they meant to put the voice actor in there and they never got around to it, and it's <laughs> wonderful. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so that's that's Avengers. That that's my uh, opinion on that. <laughs> but um, I mean, it looked it looked cool. They added that comical relief aspect of Guardians of the Galaxy because it was a very funny movie, aside from the fact that it is an, a hero movie, and. James Gunn, he's good. Um, Star Lord, I liked his his super ability, where he just puts the MP like his MP3 player music on and just goes buck wild. Well, it's not an MP3 player; it's a Walkman. A Walkman, yeah. a Walkman. Sorry, yeah, I was yeah. I couldn't. Both, both I didn't, are equally ancient. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to sound stupid just waiting to think of the name, so I just said MP3 player just to keep it simple. But yeah. <laughs> Now we get it. Yeah, but it was, like, uh, super cool. That was definitely one of the cooler parts of the actual trailer. But, yeah. um... Yeah, I feel like most people, though, watching that trailer were either, like, pretty excited for it or uh, not very excited for it. And it really just depends on how much you care about Marvel at this point, you know? 
Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm probably the most excited about it in this group right here. Because... Especially considering it's like a Marvel Square Enix game and we got Avengers and that was, you know, a load of booty cheeks. Yeah, they'll play DC Universe. Yeah. <laughs> Is DC Universe like an MMO? Yeah, but, you know, it's the opposite of Marvel, so... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like So I can understand a lot of people like watching this trailer and just being like please end already. Especially since they spent like 15 minutes on it. No, yeah. I would say it was a good 20 25 minutes to be honest. They yeah. showed a, a good yeah, amount. Yeah, it was closer to 20. Cuz they showed a good amount of stuff. Like I was we were sitting there for a minute when we were watching it earlier. Yeah. Full disclosure, I did not watch the whole show. Unlike uh, yeah. these two, <laughs> I was spared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were at work, which I don't know which one's worse. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hey, at least yeah. you had the at least you had the option to just do nothing if you were working. We were stuck with this. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't bad. It was just I'm just making a joke, but. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's move on from. Uh... Guardians of the Galaxy, we were spending too much time on it. Yes. Just like Square did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the next one? I can't even remember. It was so forgettable. I think it was the Final Fantasy remasters. Oh, the right. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're remaking 1 through 6. Uh, they're redoing all the sprites for them. That's... They didn't really show off it, though. Like, they barely showed it. You know, it's like, it's only your most important franchise, Square. Oh, 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 you know, oh. Your most beloved games of all, like, of, like everything you have. You, you're going to spend less than two minutes on it. I, th I think I got the vibe from what those games were. Do we really need more? Okay. I don't know. I'd like to see them a little bit so I can understand, like, the visual differences that they made. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Spend more than two minutes, please, on Final Fantasy compared to the... 30 fucking minutes you spent on Marvel shit and the goddamn presentation, you know? So yeah, they did the... That was the Pixel remaster that they did. Yep, and yep. they're adding which, they're 1 through 6. Know, yeah, which thank God for that because they fucked up 5 and 6 so hard on their Steam slash mobile re-releases. Thank God they're finally going back and fixing it. I've been wishing nice. them to do this for years. Of course, they finally waited until I bothered to go buy one and five on my Vita. <laughs> you know? Right. They, they yeah. had to wait until after I bought the PS1 versions. Which, um... This is gonna now be... I gotta go buy them again. <laughs> oh, so these are going on... The, these are gonna be phone games. Okay, cool. They're going on Steam and Mobile, but yeah. they're not porting it to Switch. Which sucks, because I was going to say yeah. I'd totally play this on my Switch, but... Oh, wait, this isn't coming to Switch? Nope, it's just not. Steam and it's Mobile. Steam and Mobile, and that's oh? it. Yep, Android and iOS. Weird. Yeah. But, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. And after that, they uh, showed Legend up. Of, Legend of Mana was the next one. Right, yeah. They just reminded you, it's like, hey guys, don't forget about Legend of Mana. Yep, they showed us the know. opening cinematic... It's um, like, we're re-releasing it. Go buy it. Yep. Uh, and that was about it. Um, after that, it was a bunch of mobile crap. Most of it looked like garbage. Mm. Uh, but there was that one near mobile game. The... That was the last forever though, wasn't it? The near yeah. Game? That's canon. You gotta play it. Oh, yeah, yeah. the <laughs> near reincarnation. That might be good. Big emphasis on the might. You never know. Being done by Yoko Taro, but probably also for a paycheck. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, we forgot something when we were talking about... Yoko Taro is nothing else but a sellout. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. Right. Yep. Uh, we forgot something. With... He's gotta get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Going back uh, really quickly, um... What did the, we forget? To the, um... Talk of the Marvel games. Uh, oh, right. There was an expansion for the Avengers game. Yep. Black Panther, which looked okay. Oh. Yeah. So... I, I don't... Oh, it's, a, it's an announcement. Yeah. It'll but, probably be better than the base game, but, you know... Yeah, that game we sucked. We talked so. about Avengers, so we can move on. Yep. But after um, that... Oh, the, the Hitman game, right? 
That's oh. also a mobile game. Oh, that was, okay, okay. That was part of the mobile stuff. Okay. Getting um, another Hitman Go one? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a sniper really? game. Yeah, it's on their phone. Oh, oh okay. So the yeah. next actual game we could talk about then was uh, Babylon's Fall. Yeah. Oh, no, no, wait. Final, don't we have Final Fantasy? Or we have Final Fantasy? Oh, that was at the we end. Did... That was after Babylon's okay. Fall. Okay, yeah. well, let's, then, yeah, let's go on Babylon's Fall. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, it's Babylon's Fall. So, I remember seeing this, like, way, way back when they first showed it off, and I was thinking, yeah, that looks neat. It's by Platinum. That looks good. But then they showed it off again this time, and now I'm thinking, co-op, live service, and they're talking about how they're taking the gameplay from Nier, but then dubbing it down. Nier was already just, dumped like, down. Yeah. For the most part. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there being like, Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Thanks. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> It's like, okay, um, it's like, if I had pre-ordered this game already, which of course I didn't, because I'm no fool, yeah. I don't pre-order shit that early on, Yeah. Uh, I would have cancelled it. <laughs> yeah. Today. So, you know, that gives you any idea about how I felt about Babylon's Fall. I mean, it looked interesting fighting style, but... Like, That's it about looks it. fleshy and pretty, but the problem with, like, Nier's combat was it was really lacking in, like, combos. Yeah. 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 Which, judging by the trailer... It's just that, but even more basic, then it's like, ugh. It's like if someone told me, it's like, we're making Overwatch, but we're even more simplistic. I'd be like... Yeah, we're making I'd Overwatch with like, no like, ultimates. Pretty much. Yeah. It, <laughs> well, like, not even that, just, like, somehow they managed to dumb down Overwatch even more. It's like, we have it so that it aims for you. You mm. don't even have to aim. And there's something like that, where it's just like... Wait, well, to be fair, like, I think the console version probably does have aim assist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, or but just, like, even for, does same with Fortnite. Same with Fortnite Apex. Pretty much every console Yeah, every console has shooter has aim, aim assist, yeah. Yeah. But, um... Yeah... Besides, that was the only thing for me. It was an interesting fighting style. But even just rewatch, I'm just kind of like watching the video again. Muted. It's just like you got your basic three hit combo and some sort of like power up you get, and that seems about it. Yeah. Like. It, it seems... Plus, it's like a live service game, and it's like an endless dungeon crawl. You know. Yeah. It, it complexity movies like that. It looks. Like, it, it's like co op. It's it's effectively into my idea is it's like a platinum version of destiny yep definitely That's best way to put it I with no with no guns with no guns with like a fantasy setting well obviously yeah it, because it's you know a high fantasy like hack and slash game but yeah it's just like i went from being somewhat interested to not interested at all please no thank you <laughs> right but, um Roger. yeah let's move on to the next uh wasn't wasn't the last thing before the Final Fantasy the uh, Life is Strange True Colors or something like that? Right, right. Life is Strange. They showed off the Life is Strange uh, remaster. They did a quick graphical comparison, and then they showed off uh, a good amount of Life is Strange True Colors. Which, holy crap, that was probably one of the better parts in my opinion, because they actually yeah, went in depth. I agree. They showed a lot of like how the auras work in the actual game with this mm -hmm. with the main character. Yeah. And it looks like they did the, uh, I forget what it's called, but where they have like those, yeah. the headset and like the body tracking, where they actually had the actual character. Well, they were showing off the mocap, yeah. you mean? Yes, yes. Yeah, they were, yeah. Where, it, was like, it was like, here's how we animated it. Yeah, yeah. That was cool, and definitely um, very intense looking game. I never played yeah. Life is Strange, but it looks like a really cool like uh, story yeah like it looks very interesting yeah. but I, i'd say those are like a kind of like an adventure game sort of yeah They're adventure games but kind of light on puzzles you know more right uh more your heavy rain but more open than that. yeah <laughs> yeah something like that it's a genre i like but yeah no because in yeah. then this one the new one you play as an empath and so you can sense people's emotions and stuff. Yeah, there's like different. Which is really colors. funny Superpower. when you think about like 
you know, people who are like, oh yeah, I'm an empath in real life. The, well, the reality is, people who say they're like empaths, they're just sort of like, yeah, I can read people's faces. It's not <laughs> hard to be an empath in real life, believe it or not. There is no magic psychic hours that go into it. It's just yeah. being like, yes, I can tell that this person is sad because they are crying. Right. <laughs> you know? It's like, I can tell this person is angry because they are shaking and have a very mad look on their face. Right. You could just you know, you could put two and two together, it's, pretty much. It's not hard to have empathy in real life, believe it or not. <laughs> but, like, um... Pretty much everyone in the world is an empath, as lo- unless you're a psychopath. Pretty much. Yeah. That's, a, that's effectively the... Like, being an empath effectively just means that you are not a psychopath. Pretty much. So it's just really funny to me to be like, oh yeah, now there is a video game about this. an empath, and but they like, have like psychic empath powers, and it's like, it's like that's a neat idea, though. You see, yes, they take it. They do take it to another <laughs> level because if she can sense like the bigger auras, they were explaining how like she can touch it, yeah, and then it like cause like a ripple or whatever, and then she actually goes into their mind. And basically sees yeah. what they're feel or feels what they're feeling, which I thought that was a cool aspect. And I like the fact that they changed, like they color, they change the yeah. color, true colors. Because basically, how the game works is like you can sense people's emotions and thoughts and feelings, and then you would use those insights you got from sensing them, you know, to make decisions that will affect the course of the story, you know. Yeah, and yeah. then there's auras that they give off. Blue being, like, sad, red being angry, and then I think yellow is worried or something. Something like that, yeah. But yeah, uh, uh, not too much more. good, for the most part. Honestly, it's, it was probably the best thing Square Enix showed off. Yep, yeah, besides... But it's another thing that I am personally not that interested in. Yeah. Besides our next game. Yes, which yeah. is... I'm interested. I don't know if it's gonna be good. I don't even. What was the name of it again? It was Stranger. Like... Oh wait, uh, the next game. Yeah. Stranger that's... of Paradise: Final Fantasy Origin. Yes, that was it. They had a weird name. It's essentially what? a Final Fantasy one like reimagining. Because what is like, this? It's <laughs> fucking weird. It's made by like Team Ninja. Yep. Or is it Ninja? Team? No, one no, of the other. Team Ninja. You're right. Team Ninja. Okay, I was right. Yeah. So you know the Ninja Gaiden devs. Um, they also made Other M, right? Uh, that I don't know. I'm yes, sure. I think they yeah, did. Because it yeah. couldn't have been the other ninja people. God, why can't we just get Ninja Gaiden 4? Uh, it's like, can we just get Ninja Gaiden 4, please? Team Ninja hey, at please. least they can at least they can count to three. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, this Ease might be ninja. a... This is fascinating. I'm so fascinated by whatever this game is. Like... Well, I, I mean, we do. I know it, what it is, but we're, we're going to kill chaos. Yeah, we're going to fucking kill chaos. Oh, the it's place for chaos I am, lift. I'm here to ca- kill chaos. I'm here to kill chaos and eat chaos's ass out of all out of chaos's yeah. ass. <laughs> <laughs> chaos. I mean, besides that, it looked cool. Like, the actual trailer looked very cool. I mean, you know it what? was kind I, of... I feel very... The opposite. I think the trailer looked terrible, but I think the game will probably oh. actually be okay. No, no, it looked terrible in a way that I'm fascinated by. Like terrible. Same. Like I want to play this game. Yeah, same. I'll have this to wait like to see gameplay game. footage of the demo because they actually have a demo out like right now, today. Yeah, I heard it. That was broken. PS5. Oh, it's broken. Okay, this game is gonna be ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This is gonna be great. It's gonna be like. Deadly premonition, where it's gonna be like a wonderful <laughs> game to play, but it's gonna suck. It's gonna be awful on paper, but it's gonna be wonderful yeah. to play. Uh, he plays just so a guy. Yeah, he plays a guy. His name is Jack. Jack Septikai, <laughs> kicking ass and taking names. Nah. No, but it's so funny to me because he, he reminds me so much of like Jack from Jack Two, because the very first line uh, in Jack Two, when you first hear Jack talk is because this is like because in the first game he's mute and then the second and third yeah. game they give him a voice and this very first line of dialogue is I'm gonna kill Praxis <laughs> and so it's just so funny to me that this character 
is named Jack, and he's just like, I'm gonna kill Chaos. <laughs> I'm here to kill Chaos. Where is Chaos? <laughs> Bring him to me, I'm gonna rip his head off. <laughs> he's just buck wild. He's got oh no God. cap. He looks like he just walked out of J.C. Penny. <laughs> <laughs> Big up. Look at giant sword on his back. Yeah, a giant, a giant, very long fair, sword. No, it's really funny though because this game was actually like leaked and stuff to an extent. Like, all we knew about it from the leaks is that uh, it was going to be like made by like Team Ninja. It was going to be a Final Fantasy One like remake. And it was going to be a Souls-like. So, a little true. Not really. It's not a Souls-like at all. It doesn't have Souls combat, oh. you know. Um, it, it has... It is, it is a, an action it, RPG-like Souls. To be fair, Souls-like is a nebulous as fuck genre. Aside no. from... It's either you're directly inspired by Dark Souls, or, like, you're a Dark Souls knockoff or you're not. See, that's just because everybody poorly defines genres, and this is just a problem with genres in general that you can't, that people just can't come up with, you know. That's because genres are crap. Definition genres for genres, are crap anyway. especially in video games. <laughs> now, my definition of Souls like is that if it has bonfires, then it is a Souls like. <laughs> you know, like the thing that makes yeah. Hollow Knight a Souls like is that there you have the benches, and then when you die, you drop all your money, and then you have to go back and get it. You know, that's, that's like what makes Hollow Knight a Souls like. That's been around for like decades before that. Yeah, sense. if it has a corpse run bonfire like mechanic, then it's a Souls like. You know, yeah. like how Minecraft is a Souls like because you have the beds which function as your bonfires, <laughs> and when you die, you drop all your stuff. Right. Yeah. To be honest, you sound insane calling Dark Souls a Souls like. What do you mean? <laughs> of course, Dark Souls is a Souls like. Souls like oh, no, is Minecraft a genre. <laughs> Uh, the only problem with this definition is that Hollow Knight is arguably a Souls-like. Yeah, well, so is, um... What is that one game that we saw the sequel to? It's like a side-scroller. Man, I'm having a brain fart right Salt and Sacrifice is a Souls-like. Salt and Sacrifice is a Dark Souls. Yeah, that was 100% a Souls-like. Yeah, they're gimmicks. They're gimmicks. Yeah, they're gimmicks. Yeah, they're gimmicks. What if Dark Souls was 2D? That's their gimmick. Which is good and bad. To, to the game's detriment, it really replicates Dark Souls well. Yeah, like having which fall is, damage. Which is, oh, and no map. <laughs> I mean, they did add, like, really accentuated final finisher moves. So. Uh, yeah. I mean. Which is a cool yeah, touch. Uh, Imagine if Dark Souls had, like, a fucking finisher move. Like, you can knock somebody to, you knock your enemy yeah. to a certain. Has that. What? Yeah. Bloodborne has, like, you can, like, rip out, like, their heart. Yeah. I know, but what if Dark Souls only, did? Dark Souls only has that, really, with the parry moves. Yeah. But that's... Like, the riposts, those all have cool finisher animations and stuff. But, uh, like, that's about it. Yeah. But, uh, let's get back to talking about how much we want to kill Chaos. Let's kill Chaos. Yeah. Kill Chaos. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, in fact, you know, at least an action RPG. You know, it's not like a pure action game. The guy does not wear his JCPenney shirt the entire game. You do, in fact, get armor. That's just his basic starting gear, which is why yeah. it looks so stupid and generic. Okay. He does, in fact, Usually, if you go cool all out on making the default outfit look the coolest, I feel like. I mean, because... He no. could have tried a little harder to make it look so he didn't just walk out of a convenience store. No, like, to be honest, it was a little... Century, you know? It was very goofy because, like, he, like, he they just, got to Chaos and he's just, like, in a t-shirt just fucking socking yeah. him in the face. And it's like, yo, you got nothing. Yeah. How are you He doesn't even look like he belongs in the world he exists in, you know? True, yeah. What if it's Isekai? That, that, he might be. It, it legitimately might be. Yeah. They should have They should have put Riven from League of Legends in there and she would have looked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I'm here to kill uh, chaos. <laughs> oh my god. No, I'm here to kill Zack. There we go. The character, of course. Yeah. League of Legends, you know. Classic champ. But no, alright, back, Zach. back. No, wait, we can kill yeah. this to Zack, but. 
Uh, but yeah. Any uh, anything else you want to say on this? Uh, this game looks weird, and I'm intrigued as hell. It looks weird and dumb, and I don't know what the fuck Square Enix is thinking. I'm excited for Namora's Wild Ride. Yeah. Anyways, uh, wanna, but wanna... I do want to talk about <laughs> the two the two goofy goobers you have following with you, who I'm assuming are your Donald and Goofy of this game. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to call them Donald and Goofy because that's effectively what they are. Your two AI uh, companions that don't do much of anything but are just there in the action RPG. They you know what? This is Grimdark Kingdom Hearts, but Final Fantasy One. Kind of. Yeah. This game does not look that grimdark. This looks about as dark as. Yeah, King actually, no, it's not actually grimdark. It's what Square Enix thinks grimdark looks like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, this is, in fact, is, honestly, this game isn't even dark. It's definitely trying to be dark, but it's just stupid and edgy. This feels like <laughs> it came out, like, in the 2000s. I mean, it doesn't even look visually pleasing, because I just froze, like... I, I mean that, like, in the terms of, like, you know, uh, like, the dialogue and stuff. Right. And how it's trying to be, like, mature or something. Like, this isn't your grandpa's Final Fantasy one. We're here to kill chaos. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It's like, these guys are like, we're the warriors of light, but they're like the edgiest motherfuckers alive. We're, we're warriors yeah. of light. Bring me chaos. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, I don't know. Also, like, in Final Fantasy 1, there's four warriors of light. There's only three of these guys. Is, yeah, where did the fourth one go? Did he die? Did he pass away? Vision. Yeah, chaos killed him. He is chaos. There it is. There we go. Although, oh. I did read on the website for it that it's going to have jobs. Oh. So. Oh, who, who there you go. Something to look forward to, Black game. Chestnut. One thing to look yeah. forward to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jobs in an action game, though, I don't care. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, it has to specifically be in a JRPG. Okay. Otherwise, the mechanic doesn't work. Well, never mind. <laughs> it's like, if you're gonna do that, I'd rather you just go for the free, open-ended, you know, Dark Souls approach, where I can just effectively make my own jobs. By just adjusting my build, you know? Right. But, uh... We'll have to, we'll have to see some demo stuff for it, but yeah, it looked weird. Um, so you guys want to move on to Microsoft then? Yeah. Sure. Um, so at the beginning of it, they had like a little talk. Um, the majority of this was them releasing a bunch of games that are coming to Game Pass, but they did yeah. start off the, the presentation with, uh, I think it was a trailer for The Outer Worlds 2. No, that was way later. I was in the middle. Oh, okay. Well, what did they... Oh, Starfield, my bad. Starfield is what they Starfield. did for it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, space. Yeah, easy to mix them up. Yeah, Outer Worlds 2 was the one parody trailer where the announcer guy was talking about. It was like, ooh, is this going to actually be in the game? No. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, you remember that one, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the first thing they showed off was Starfield. Because I remember Todd Howard came on the, on the screen, and I was like, I am Todd Howard. I own Microsoft now. It's like, you think Microsoft bought us? No, we bought Microsoft. <laughs> we are making Skyrim Windows. In space. No Man's Skyrim. Yeah. I'm really proud of that one. I came up with that like an hour ago. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I'm sure 5D million other people have already came up with that joke. I'm sure, but, you know, I don't care. We're original here. <laughs> we are all original here. No, nah, we're not. Like, I think 80% of our humor is reference humor. Yeah. <laughs> reference really... humor is fine. It's the best kind of humor. If... Yeah. It's true. It's zoomer humor. <laughs> But yeah, uh, Starfield, the trailer, looks sick. Uh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't the actual game. But, yeah. You know. Can't get anything out of it, Better really. It's gonna be... Screen. 
They you know? said this, the gameplay will be similar to Skyrim. Okay. Which, you know, Skyrim gameplay is not the best, it but be it's, it's cozy. All out, you know? I think they mean in terms of structure. Yeah, yeah, it definitely looked more closer to Fallout, though. So, I'm guessing by that concept, it's going to be a mix of Fallout and Skyrim, but in space. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm sure it's going to be primarily gun-focused. I mean, well, Fallout's like, you know, Golf Golf is like scavenging and stuff, while Skyrim has like more... Right. Towns and stuff. That's why I'm <laughs> saying, like, it, gameplay-wise, it would be like a mix of the two. Yeah. Yeah, where it's like the shooter, the no, more FPS-centric gameplay of Fallout with the more structure of Elder Yeah, Star. yeah. And, you know, Skyrim and Fallout, like, the, the Bethesda Open World games, they're fun. I like them for a good first playthrough. They're... <laughs> I like just exploring the world and then for, like, 90 hours and be like, okay, it was fun. I'll never finish a story now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I tried Oblivion and I've tried Fallout 3 and I just never could really get into it. Oblivion's issue is that the world's not very fun to explore because it's just one... They're just fields. That's it. Yeah. Just fields. So hopefully uh, Starfield will have some interesting environments. All we saw was... I don't well, know, I'm assuming moon... you're just flying around in space and then you're landing on planets. But, like... Yeah. Do I, I do ask the question, is like, how are they going to actually structure the universe? Is it just you're going to be in one solar system? Because that could be an interesting way of, like minimizing the scope while still feeling like a big epic space adventure you know yeah because if they're doing yeah. just one if they're doing just one solar system that like if you're really looking ah, you at could a, have a galaxy and just have like like yeah, there's 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 billions stuff. of stars in a galaxy yeah. I, I i don't mean to, to nerd out real quick but i've been watching yeah, some netflix like, i've been watching some netflix yeah. shows and i know that shit no a solar system is only our eight planets though yeah oh i'm yeah. I, I meant to say a galaxy then like yeah. A galaxy is fucking huge. Solar system, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. A solar system is just like, you It's know, just the amount of planets orbiting. Solar system is planets that revolve around a star. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Which I'm thinking, Which... it's just like, if you just focus on just one, you know, it could essentially minimize uh, the I don't scope think that... where it's doable without feeling like, you know, I don't know, it's like, I have to travel 12 billion miles in space in order to get to the next planet, or whatever. You know? Yeah, well, I'm wondering. That's, that's the thing, I'm wondering... you do anything in space, it's like, especially in video, terms of video games, the scope just becomes so massive that it just becomes, like, you know, yeah. undoable. You just, you just have, like, an that's FTL kind of thing, with... and... Yeah, where well, you, totally, well, you just kind of... just feel like, oh, you just traveled 12 billion miles, whatever. Well, like, yeah, but that's different in, like... FTL than it is to like you know say like a Skyrim like a big no, open I'm world so... RPG. Oh, no, I'm not talking about the game FTL. I'm talking about the concept of faster than light, like travel, like it. No, no. Like okay, I thought you were talking about the actual game. FTL. <laughs> no, no, I, I just be like faster than light, like travel stuff. Yeah, I mean, okay, sure, but yeah, they'll have something like that. But I don't <laughs> see how you can incorporate that while still having the actual universe, unless it's like. Like, say, there's, like, 12 different solar systems that you can warp between. Yeah, well, I, I, you, like, I, I don't know, you have something like uh, Cowboy Bebop, where there's, like, like, you have to, like, go to, like, actual, like, gates or lanes that take you to, like, a third. Maybe. Like, Maybe, I don't know. Because the only thing I can even think of it, to comparison it to is, like, No Man's Sky. And we all know yeah. how that turned out. And that was, like, 100% <laughs> completely procedurally generated, you know? Right. Yeah. Before they did fix it, though. Made it better. But yeah. Um, I feel like a, just a Star Wars thing where you just have stupidly fast space movement that you could just yeah. fling yourself across the universe whenever you I want. Mean, I guess, in theory, they could do it like um, just how the Outer Worlds did it, where there is no space travel stuff, really, but oh. you just have planets that you can fly to, you know? Yeah, I mean, I guess, if I if I had to guess, I guess they're just gonna probably do it like the Outer Worlds did it. But who knows? Uh, yeah. Let's move on to the next thing, because there's still a ton of stuff to talk about. What was the next thing? Uh, go on. I don't even remember. Here. 
<laughs> oh, 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 it was, we'll it was Redfall, Redfall, it. Redfall. No, no, that was at the very end. Really? That was the last yeah. thing they showed off. But we don't have to go in order. I thought, well, I, we gotta make sure we get everything. No, well, at least everything if interesting. We forget something, we forget something, and that's Xbox's fault. <laughs> it wasn't very memorable. Yeah. Remember, if you forgot something, that means it wasn't important. Two and a half men taught me that. <laughs> are you saying two and a half men is forgettable, or was that a moral of an episode? It was a moral of the episode. <laughs> also, two and a half men can be forgettable. <laughs> no, no, the, the, it's it's a famous clip from the show. It's like he left his son in the rain at like <laughs> baseball practice. It's like I feel like I forgot something, and then Charlie is like, "Well, if you forgot something, then it must have wasn't very important." <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, you're right." And then it cuts the his son <laughs> stuck it out in the rain at like school. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. But, uh, okay, back to E3. Do you Dude, guys want to When's the two and a half men, Sam? I don't know. Uh, do you want to just skip to Redfall? Yeah. Talk about that now? I pulled up okay. a list, so I guess we could just... So, um, we'll just yeah. go in this order. Okay. But, um, yeah, Redfall. I'm trying to remember this game. Oh, wow. Uh, you fight vampires. Oh, yes, this game. It, it this... was the last thing we showed off. Okay, so Vito trailer. So this game looked cool. Like yeah. it honestly did. Like they had this the CG movie to advertise a game looked cool, I agree. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. That's the best way to put it. But essentially from what we saw, you're a four man team and you're like trying to discover like you were you you or not discover, you were like taking a video of like this cult. And Basically, the cult saw you because some shit happened, and then you're fighting the, the cult. Trash cam. You're fighting the cult, yeah. and then the cult has vampires. Yeah, well, the cult leaders are the vampires. It's a vampire cult, you know. Um, Naturally. But and you gotta use your Haman powers to kill them. Yeah. yeah. Some wacky powers. <laughs> uh, yeah, the cinematic trailer. It's hard to talk about. Like, the powers of teleporting and stuff, yeah. I'm really curious how that will work. I, I can only assume that this is just another Love for Dead clone, but instead of zombies, it's vampires. Yes. Yeah, but there Which is. is the... But then there's also, like, the human enemies that use guns and stuff, because for some reason they're on Team Vampire. Well, they're well, stupid. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, not the really. Vampires are like trying to destroy the world and stuff. Yeah, and you guys are like an elite group of cool guys. I, think there was a black hole I don't think you're an elite group. I think you're just a bunch of posers who have yes. magic powers. I think you are all posers. I, okay, I think you're like wizards and shit. So who it's knows? mages versus vampires. Because they all had like magic. Like the one guy could turn invisible. The other guy had, like, a familiar... I think one guy was, a, like, a tech guy, though. So he doesn't have magic powers. There was the black girl, and she, she had magic stuff. She could spawn yeah, she, she made, like, a teleporting doorway. Like, like... It was an elevator. She yeah. could make a an magic elevator. elevator. <laughs> Which, yeah. she had a cool scene in the trailer. Yeah. She, like, popped off for a second, low-key. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, not really much to say. It is just a cinematic trailer, no gameplay of it, so... Yeah, I don't know. Really just have to reassess it when if they when and if they release a gameplay trailer of it. Eventually. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. Unless it gets cancelled. Which would, which would uh, suck, honestly. It kind of looks promising to me. But... Yeah. Um, majority of these games we're going to talk about, by the way, for anybody watching... Um, they're gonna be on Game Pass. 27 out of the 30 uh, games talked about today are going to Game Pass. Mm -hmm. But the next one is Psychonauts 2. Okay. Yeah. Pretty looking. Good. I'm afraid to jump around. Yep. 
But yeah, um, Psychonauts, for anybody who hasn't played it's Psychonauts. one of the few games they showed off that wasn't a shooter. Yeah. It wasn't a first or third person <laughs> shooter. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, Psychonauts. That's what I feel like Microsoft always struggles with, is like variety in their shows. You know? Yeah, definitely. Especially with this one in particular. Like, this one was substantially worse in terms of variety than their previous E3s. It's like 90% of this was, like, first-person shooters. And then, like, 5% was, like, sim sim games. And then, like, the last percent was Psychonauts 2. Like, everything that wasn't Forza Flight Simulator... Two, which was just an update for Fight Simulator Two. Yeah, Andrew, it's it's just coming. Anywhere. It's just coming to Game Pass, yeah. and also oh, they're adding new content, I think. Uh, and like, it's like you know, Forza, Fight Simulator, Psychonauts Two. Those are the only three games on this list that wasn't a first-person shooter, yeah. except for like one or two indie games that they showed off, was along with it. But like in terms of like main. Xbox stuff that wasn't like indie, those are the only three that wasn't like a first slash third person shooter. Which is a little annoying that like there's a lot of shooters coming out now. Yeah, I would a lot even of shooters say coming out. Annoying as much as just just kind of exhausting. Yeah, that's it, the better. That's it the better. Feels so oversaturated. You know. Yeah. And, and it kind of feels like a problem with the Western game market just in general this is the oversaturation of shooters specifically as a genre you know compared to other games it feels like we get Fine. But... people buy i don't have a problem with them making shooters i have a problem with them only making shooters <laughs> exactly you know it's really all it is it's like please give me anything else it's like it's the equivalent of being like, here's milk chocolate. It's like, okay, I like the milk chocolate, but could you please give me some dark chocolate too? Or I some, mean, maybe like, not dark chocolate, but some... Bar or a Three Musketeers bar along with it. You're just giving me plain Hershey's milk chocolate bars. Can I get something else? Could you at least give me some with almonds in them? I don't know. I, I, I feel like... You know what I'm saying? Lumping yeah. Lumping shooter, like, lumping them all together as just shooters, like, they're, they're all very different, I feel like. The they are they very like... different, but they're also more similar than they are different. Yeah, they like, really let's are. Space the facts, they're more similar than they are different. Making a game where you don't shoot a gun and it's an action game uh, can be difficult. <laughs> it doesn't even need to be an action game. It's just like, I don't know, could I get see more platformers just in general that aren't from Nintendo or, you know, because like, it's, we're getting Psychonauts 2, and it's like, this is literally the only. Like oh, crashed four last year. That's true, but it's like, at best, we'll get one big platformer every couple. Expecting years. platformers from often from AAA is silly. That's not, those aren't the kind of. They used to do them. That used yeah, to be they used their to do them thing. Twenty years ago. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like the industry's different. It's not different. Nothing's changed. They just decided to stop making that stuff. The reality is the audience hasn't really changed. They just decided to stop. I don't know. I, 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 I think... I don't know. It's I don't like think how Crash they decided that horror history. doesn't wouldn't sell anymore, and then they stopped making yeah. horror games for, like, a half a decade, and then they realized, oh, wait, horror does fucking sell, and then they actually yeah, started was doing them again. You know? Uh, but stuff like generic shooters are the games that sell gangbusters. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I think this is more of a problem with middle age that is kind of being gone to an extent yeah i mean i just have this problem he's gone i mean it's it's this is like even an increasingly problem when you also factor in the all the other like old franchises that have become like quote unquote modernized in which they just butchered the gameplay like what they originally did to resident evil when they like did resident evil 6 and stuff they realized their mistake and backtracked, but, you know, Square Enix still hasn't, as seen earlier. 
Like it just it's so crazy to me that Square Enix, which is a company that founded itself and became so popular and successful off of making JRPGs, doesn't seem that interested in making JRPGs anymore. Yeah. You know? It's like, where did they think they got all their money from? It wasn't from making the uh, shit they're currently making, I can tell you that much. Well, to a part it was, because I think 15 is like the top three selling, best selling like it in the series. It failed. It never made it its failed money because, back. yeah, because they overspent it. Exactly. Money. It's the same thing as 6. But Six, critics you know, are just bad at like, budgeting. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> obviously. But enough rambling about the problems of the AAA game industry. Yeah. That's what you know. Complaining about complaining about AAA is stupid because you know, indie games are great. You could just say fuck it and not care most of the time. I don't know. <laughs> but, anyways, Psychonauts two. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's next game. It's good. Yeah, uh, that, that's really all we could say. It looked all right. Yeah. Second notes once okay. I'm not a huge fan of it. But yeah. It controls kind of awkwardly, and it's not super funny. Well, it's not supposed to be entirely. Uh, uh, I think Tim Schafer's that two will be good. People who liked one, I'm sure, will enjoy it. Uh, yeah. Let's just move on to the next game. Next game is Age of Empires. Cool. You this have an one. army, and you hit our army. Yeah, it's an RTS, right? Yes. Yeah. Which... It looks good. Yes, it really does. They had a really nice uh, gameplay trailer, or not gameplay trailer, but trailer. Uh, I'm pretty sure there was a bunch of gameplay in there. Some so. gameplay. An overall trailer. Some gameplay, some not. It counts. It was cool. It showed off more gameplay than most of the games on this list. No. Yeah, and no. it looked really cool. That was another problem with uh, Microsoft's showcase, just in general. It's like almost no gameplay. Yeah, everything was just a pre-rendered trailer. Uh, I was really hoping to see more stuff from things they had already announced, and they just didn't really show us anything, you know, for them. Yeah, which kind of sucked. And instead they showed us a bunch of new stuff, but it's still like... None of the stuff you announced earlier back when you revealed the console has come out yet. And none of this stuff is going to come out for another year as well. Which... And I'm just in there being like, I don't know why anyone would buy an Xbox right now. It has no games. Like, people say, talk about how the PS5 has no games. The Xbox really has no games. There's literally nothing yeah, on Well, it. Xbox is really good with its multi-plats just because it's stuff like Game Pass. That's true. Like, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know. I think Game Pass is a big selling point. It really is. I being like, none of I, this shit's out yet. I'm typically more interested in, you know, buying games just on their own, but Game Pass is a good fucking deal. <laughs> it really is. They added so, they add so much to that. Like, they actually add quality games, too. Like, I, I, I was just browsing. The entire Yakuza the series is already on there. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the things they were talking about. But um, yeah, I was just browsing it the other day, and I was I found games that I even know were on it. I just yeah yeah. What game uh, were we on? We were just we just finished talking about Age of Empires. Yeah. So let's just go well, to. What you can say about it? Just kind of your Total War style game. Yep, that'll be good. Uh, probably. <laughs> Next game. Uh... Next game, The Outer Worlds. Two. Two. So this trailer was fun. So, Outer Worlds well, is by Obsidian, Outer... correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's by Obsidian, by the... And it's directed by the original Fallout guys. Right. The original oh. Fallout guys. The guys who did one and two. Yep. Which, this um, looked pretty good. I believe yeah, not played out of worlds. Well, the, the, the trailer was really funny because nothing in it actually represents the game at all. Yes. Like, the only thing they actually have finished is the title. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm sure it will be good. People who enjoyed Outer Worlds one, I'm sure will enjoy the sequel. Yeah. Um, 
Good and job, you know, Joe. this is also technically a shooter, but at least this one's an RPG. So, you know. But yeah. Um, this one actually has less in common with all the other first-person shooters than it has more in common. Stalker's an RPG. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it so probably is Starfield. Probably. I Starfield's mean, an RPG, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've been yeah. dumbing down on the I mean, RPG. Yeah, to be fair, before. yeah, now that I think about it, there was... It wasn't entirely first-person shooters. There was also a ton of RPGs in here. Yeah. Um, but they're all, like, you know, Western RPGs that have first-person shooter combat. See, first-person first you know? shooter is such a broad genre at this point. Well, that's just because of how video game genres essentially work. Where Which is fine. Almost every I, I video game is, like, a combination of multiple genres because of how I, I, I don't, I don't in video games. Want, I don't want... I more prefer a game be interesting on its own than force itself to be a genre game. Well, of course. I know, I know it's know, a big thing no in games films. Ever a lot of... form to its, should be forced to conform to its genre, you know? I, I know it's a much bigger thing in films. Like, a lot of directors try to avoid having their films ever be, like, defined, like, possibly be defined by a genre. Like, I know Scorsese has, like, said that, like, he doesn't want any of his movies to be a genre film. Yeah. Which... I, I, I can get to be fair, genres work a lot differently in games than they do in movies. Just because movie genres yeah, movies are usually it's more based mechanical. Off of, yeah, mechanical. It's usually based off of the thematics or the setting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fi fi um, you know? Well, games, it's based, you know, off entirely off mechanics, you know? Yeah. It's based off of, like, what is the camera angle? How is the game, like, like is it top-down, side-scrolling, 3D, you know? Is it like a? Is it in first person? Is it in third person? You know, like. Yes. It's like, uh, like, what is the leveling system? It's like, is it like, how many? Like, especially with like RPGs. Like, in order to even be counted as an RPG, you literally have to just have this many RPG elements in it, <laughs> essentially. Right. You know? Because Man, so many games will RPGs add in RPG don't even have elements. Playing. Let's be real. Yeah. I well, here's the thing. A, Being an a, RPG a, doesn't mean that it's a game that ha is a game where you roleplay in it as much as it's just a game that has RPG mechanics. It has you know? mechanics that they stole from Dungeons and Dragons exactly. 30 years ago. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, let's be real, JRPGs involve little to... Like, I mean, like, the standard idea of JRPG contains yeah. little to no roleplaying, like, in the yeah. traditional sense. Which wasn't true originally like old yeah. old jrpgs like final fantasy 1 dragon quest 1 final fantasy 3 they all have lots of role playing in them considering yeah. that the protagonists are silent and you affect as much to... role playing as you could <laughs> yeah as, as much role playing as you can get out of an nes game you know yes. right as opposed to modern jrpgs where all the characters are named and are fully voiced sure, yes and, very you know, very story like story like happens. you don't even get any player decision and agency and stuff but you know they still have the rpg that. mechanics so still an rpg it started that that would have been the early snes era right i'm trying to think pretty much yeah it kind of started that trend would it would have been final fantasy, final fantasy 2 technically is the first one oh yeah two did that. that yes but four is the one that really kicked that off yeah let's... i imagine dragon quest 3 also yeah dragon quest extent. but yeah let's um, get back to what were we talking about we were talking know. about uh the outer worlds 2 oh yeah yes yeah, so we're talking in rpg perfect. yeah we, we can't say anything RPG about stuff, it so that works yeah we can't say much about it because uh, we didn't see anything that was real the trailer was funny i enjoyed it i liked that it <laughs> made fun of shitty CGI video game trailers. <laughs> so, yeah. But... Uh, one of the better things they showed off, I feel like. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what was next? The, uh, next was uh, Flight Simulator. Micro Microsoft Flight Simulator. Right. I'm talking about Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah, we've talked about it earlier. Uh, and then... Next is going to be the Halo Infinite multiplayer. Right. And they also had a trailer for the campaign. So the multiplayer is free, which is cool. Interesting. Yeah. I'm assuming you'll still have to have, like, Xbox 
gold or whatever it's called, you know. Right. Um, do you need to, to play um like Windows ten games? Yeah, I still I believe so. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, it's cool that the multiplayer is free. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the single campaign they didn't They didn't really show any much they didn't show much for it. Yeah, it was just cutscenes and stuff. Which and sucks. I honestly thought that was really disappointing. Like I was expecting a big Halo blowout and they really failed to deliver. Yeah, they kinda shit the bed with the whole showing off the campaign. I'm expecting from Halo gameplay, like what can you do? I don't know. Show so me. Just show us. Halo just show games. us. Show me it so that I know it's not gonna be dog shit. That's exactly that's really all I want. You know? It's like yeah. I have no faith in your game until you show me gameplay and it isn't garbage, you know? Yeah. <sighs> but um next one Hor- Forza Horizon 5 so it's pretty yes like holy yeah, shit sure. the to an fucking... extent it seems like a tech demo which I think a lot of Forza games are to an extent uh, that's they're fine. always you know they're good racing games and stuff but they're they always sell, like, they very make well. them to show off how good the graphics can possibly be yeah, like, yeah but the impressive fucking... in a game where you're going yeah. fast the ray tracing in this game is fucking nuts. Like, hey, seriously. Isn't Sega stolen the Forza engine to make a Sonic game yet? Yeah. <laughs> it did not pull the car up on stage, though. Sadly. Yeah. That would have been great. <laughs> they did make sure to spend a lot of time showing it off in game. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, they were showing off the special car for that, which was the Mercedes AMG. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's... Mercedes. Yeah, the Forza game was honestly one of the better showers. But it was also something where it's like, if you don't care about Forza, this probably dragged on really long for you. Yeah, I liked if it. If you they... like Forza, then you were probably being like, oh yeah, we're getting all this stuff. This is awesome, you know? Yeah, cars! Which was me. Yeah. Which was me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, not really much. It's just another racing game. They showed off some cool graphics like we said. But it looks more of the same, you know, and that's pretty good for Forza. Yeah. Don't don't change it. it. Broke, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Pretty much. But uh, next thing what is next? which is definitely going to be our favorite one to talk about, Back for Blood. Oh yeah. Oh, was this at the Xbox show? Yes. Yeah, they showed it off. There was a lot of Back for Blood stuff because there was also oh. like a big Back for Blood PvP show off. I didn't actually watch that. Oh, is <laughs> it? Uh, is it just like um, the infection mode or whatever it's called from Left 4 Dead? Yeah, yeah, it's just like the one from Left 4 Dead where you play as the zombies, the special infected, and you fuck up the players. So what are they called in this one? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. They might have shown it off, but I don't remember. Um. But yeah, it looks good. I don't know. It's one of those things where I'm a little weary of this game for some reason. There's something about it. It looks mildly cheap a bit. Yeah. But, Which... I don't know. Uh, I feel like this is just one of those games where I'm just going to have to wait for it to come out and test it out myself, you know? Definitely. Yeah. To really see how it stacks up compared to Left 4 Dead. Yeah. I'm half worried because I think Valve's polish is a big part of what makes Left 4 Dead great. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh. I mean, it looks yeah. promising. I might check it out. But... Next one, if we're done talking about this. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Yeah, well, the next topic, or game rather, that they showed off is Contraband. Right. right. Which... This is another one where it's like no gameplay, not even a semblance of gameplay. It was all CG. Uh, but it's made by the. It was Just Cause, right? It was Just Cause Tests, right? Pretty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's how Square Enix owns Just, just Cause. Fun. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they own the IP you know, the dev studio. I don't know. Possibly. They may have just published it. I think that's what I'm thinking. And that's about it. Okay. 
Um, but yeah, it's made by the Just Cause guys. And it gave me a little bit of Just Cause vibes. But I know it's like co-op and open world. So I'm guessing it's supposed to be like a co-op Just Cause game. I don't know, maybe that's a bit of a big ex assumption. I but mean... There really um, isn't much to go off of from this game other than it's a another co-op shooter. Yeah. That's another open <laughs> world game. It feels like they just ch ch like chucked off all of the boxes on the, the this this feels like a fucking manufactured executive driven game, you know? Like the, the, there's like the chart said this is what we need to do in order for the game to sell, guys. We have to do these specific things, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that, that's how I feel about this. Honestly, it's, I know it's nothing about game. it. That's a thing. Yeah, nobody does. <laughs> so I guess we can move on. Yeah, next one being Hades. Yeah, it's coming to Xbox and Game Pass. Okay, we can move on now. <laughs> uh, Yakuza like a dragon. <laughs> Come into Xbox and Game Pass, although it already was on Xbox, but now it's coming to Game Pass. Okay, we can move on. It's 12 minutes! Oh yeah, we saw this one before. Uh, you're stuck in a time loop. Like, the same 12 minutes, and you gotta figure out the correct thing to do, I guess. Right. I did then. It looks neat, it's an they indie just, game. They just showed a third-person perspective for the whole thing, so it's just kind of... Yeah. I think that just is the game. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's just how the game looks and stuff. Like they were, I'm pretty sure they were showing gameplay. But I don't, I don't know. We we've seen it before, but they didn't show off anything new for it. Yep. Um, so we can move on. Uh next one's gonna be Doom. Right. It's getting enhanced oh, PS5. Series X and PS five uh graphical upgrades. Um, um, 120 FPS on PS5, damn. Yeah, and on Xbox, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 4 and 4K. Impressive. So that's gonna be cool. Yep, I was hoping for more it announcements. <laughs> I, uh, I was really hoping for some well, sort of quake I'm announcement. Well, I'm pretty sure a bunch of old Doom's g Doom games also got put on Game Pass. I don't know if they yeah, are makes... on there, but I, I know I saw them on, like, the... Yeah. We have the modern uh, port of Doom games on Xbox, on like PS4 and stuff, and Switch. Yeah, like they, super Doom exciting. 64 is on Game Pass, and like Doom 1, 2, maybe 3, I think. Probably. So, yeah. so and Come yeah. on, it's Quake's uh, 25th anniversary next week. Give me something, Ned. They'll probably <laughs> show something off. Hopefully. Later, after E3, Hopefully. Uh, yeah, uh, what was next? Next one was the Evil Within two. Oh wait, uh, that oh, came Evil out Within. like two years ago. Oh, why is it on? I don't this even list? remember seeing it at the showcase. Why is it on this is list it, then? It, it's, uh, it's probably on Game Pass. That's probably pro it. yeah, that's probably it. it. They just probably put it on Game Pass. I've been playing Evil Within one lately. It's pretty good. Okay, probably here we go. Like a wheel and I just totally forgot it. <laughs> you know? Okay, yeah. Here we go. So, yeah. Stalker 2. Oh, yeah. Stalker 2. Okay. This is interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, first of all, is the this Russian, a heavy, Stalker game? Heavy Russian <laughs> vibes. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. Uh, have you not played any other Stalker games? No. I haven't played any oh. Stalker games either. Um, they're janky. It's like janky Russian Fallout survival horror thing. Really? <laughs> it's hard to imagine Fallout New Vegas, but Russian. And with a shoestring budget. And that's why this is baffling, because this looks like a video game. Yeah. <laughs> it has money. I, I, I like Stalker. It's great, but... Yeah. It's Stalker 2, but didn't you say earlier there was, like, four Stalker games? Yes, this is the fourth Stalker game. <laughs> well, it's kind of like how they have, like, Bravely Default, and then Bravely Second, and then Bravely Default 2. Yes! So, <laughs> what? 
I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, um, next one is going to be Somerville. Oh, right. That was that one uh, indie game that looked like Inside. I'm not so sure if it's by the same guys. It might be. It might just have a similar style, though. Uh, I don't remember if they said the developers or not at the end of the trailer. Yeah, neither did I. That was one thing they didn't do at all. Yeah, they, like, never, they never advertised they, the... They didn't show the like name of the studio that was doing it and shit, you know? Which is weird. It kind of annoyed me. Um, but you play as, like, a family trying to escape, like, an alien invasion, it looked like. Yep. That was all it really was, because it was just another trailer. Cinematic okay. one. Yeah, it looked okay. Yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure there was a little bits and pieces of gameplay, or at the very least, that's what the game is going to look and somewhat play like, you know? Yeah. Those types of games. Uh, so next thing. Next one is gonna be oh a Plague Tale. This one looked cool. Yeah, this is a the sequel to a Plague Tale. What was the subtitle for it? I can't. Requiem. Remember. Requiem. Okay, yeah. What oh, is this uh, was a sequel to something? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. It's a sequel to a Plague Tale. Um, I didn't play the first one, but I heard good things about it. Yeah, I had a very interesting trailer as well. Hey, what is the gameplay actually? I didn't know the first one existed. Uh, they really liked it. I, I think. If I remember correctly, I remember Jim Sterling said that they really liked it. Uh, the original. I could not have... Uh, I, I heard him just fine. Okay. So that's fine. Um, so yeah. It's a game where there's a bunch of rats... This is this is the original game. It's like I'm not really sure how I would describe the genre. I guess it would kind of be survival horror. Um, you're like in medieval settlement and stuff, village, yeah. like city and stuff, and there's a big horde of rats. And I, I'm pretty sure it's less plague themed and more that it's literally a giant horde of rats that are scared of fire so if you're hoarding up a torch the rats won't jump and eat you but if your fire goes out then the giant you're swarm fucked. of rats will eat you yeah you're yeah. fucked yeah they're gonna yeah, no, 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 no. and so the game is about like getting from point A to point B but in between point A and point B is a giant ocean of rats that will eat your face <laughs> awesome but yeah that was that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, essentially, majority of these things we're talking about are just fucking uh, cinematic trailers. Nothing, no gameplay, yeah. nothing. Which I thought was a little disappointing. I don't mind seeing cinematic trailers at E3, especially for, like, brand new game announcements, you know? Right. It's like, I understand that. It's like, you want to announce your game to get the word out. But you don't have any actual gameplay to show, so you're just gonna throw up a CG trailer. Like that's fine. Give me an idea of what the game's gonna be like. Get me interested. I think the problem was a lot of them both didn't get me very interested, for the most part. And there wasn't enough like gameplay trailers for other things. Redfall was a good example of something that kind of got me interested. Because I'm kind of curious about the gameplay. Yeah. Like, I'm hungry for more. Like, I want to know what's this game going to be completely like. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's being made by... It's being made by the team that did, um... What's it called? Uh... I don't remember that game. As the Studios. I don't remember what's it's it called. Arcane? No. It was fucking... Yeah, it's Arcane. It's being made by Arcane. I thought Arcane was being Deathloop. Or They're is it just a replacement? Really Okay. They're doing both of them. Okay, Deathloop's well... Deathloop's almost done. Keep in mind, oh, you know... Yeah, 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 This is much earlier in development. And I'm assuming okay, that yeah. that studio has more than one team. Yes. <laughs> Our kid's great, though. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, you want to move on now? Yeah. May as well. Alright. Is there anything else? 
Yeah, there it looks like we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine a more. lot more shit than I fucking remember. Yeah, so next one's Slime Rancher 2. Yeah, Slime Rancher. It's cozy. Yeah, yeah I yeah. played a bunch of it. Pretty fun. That's good. Yeah. Um, that's really about it, yeah. Can, there is one positive I can say about Microsoft's overall presentation is they had a ton of shit in it. Just a ton of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it was very, very fluid. Of, very fluid. Yeah. They didn't waste time, you know, on bullshit in between, like how the PC Gamer Show does every year. <laughs> Where it's like, here's a game trailer, and now here's 25 minutes of bullshit that you don't care about. Uh, you know, it was like back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back trailers. It's like... You know, they almost never stopped. They uh, didn't stop. Yeah. But... Moving on to the next one, we got... Party Animals, which looks like it's like a sequel to Gang Beasts? I don't know. I don't know if it's by the same guys or not. It literally looks like a carbon copy of it, though. It looks identical. So if it's not by the Gang Bees guys, then somebody is plagiarizing. Somebody's <laughs> getting sued, and that's that. Yeah. Like, it, it looks too similar. It, it, it literally, you know, yeah. it's like I didn't go. Um, yeah. But, What's next? next one, Shredders. I don't remember this one. Neither do I. So... Let's move on. Replaced. Yeah. Oh, wait. This was that one 2D... Um... Pretty one? Yeah. The one with the pixel art that was like high detail. Oh, yeah. Kind of yep, 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 yep. Oh, gorgeous. And shit. Yeah, it looked good. It looked like it had some good action in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Curious. <laughs> Uh, next one's gonna be, oh, the Grounded, the Shroom and Doom update. Alright. So this is an update to Grounded, game that's already out. We don't really need to talk about it. We can just skip it. And then, uh, next is the Udon Chronicle Rising and then the Udon Chronicle 100 Heroes games. Right, right, right. So this one's actually cool. Um, so about a year-ish ago, don't know the exact time, uh, a Kickstarter came up uh, for these games, um, namely the 100 Heroes one. I think the other one was probably a bonus incentive that they met, kind of like how Bloodstain reached it, and then we got Bloodstain, like Curse of the Moon and stuff. Right. Uh, so what this is, this is a spiritual su successor to the Suikuden games made by the original like development team, essentially. Right. Uh, I'm not so sure if it's, like, the full team. I, I know it's, like, the original creators, though. You know, like, the OG directors. Right. Um, so this is really cool. Uh, I've played, I want to say, Suikoden 1. Um, and I got about halfway through it. And I did quite enjoy it. There was a lot of elements to it that I really, really liked. Uh, That's good. Yeah. But the... the and, and it's also, like, I played, like, arguably one of the weaker Suikoden games. Uh, because I know two everybody loves. Right. Uh, but See, I've, I've never, never played, played these games that. myself. Yeah, I, I have played a Suikoden game, though, so I do know what they're about. Basically, it's a JRPG with the... It's kind of similar to, uh, say, um, Chrono Cross in that there is like a hundred fucking different playable characters that you can collect to join your party. Yeah. But unlike um, a Chrono Cross, you get to have more than three people in your party at once. I'm pretty sure the party goes up to like six or eight or something like that. Like you get big parties. Right, um, okay. So I like that. Or yeah. RPG should but, I, and another, another thing which was really nice is that um, well, all the characters you can, like, get to join your party, um, you know, they're all, like, fully fleshed out characters. 
and you can't all add them to your party. They're not all intended to be. Like, some of them are of a much more supporting role. Like, in Suikoden 1, you had this, like, home base. It was, like, this giant uh, tower in the middle of the sea. It was, like, really cool. You have to name it and everything. Um, but, like, a lot of the characters that you would find, you, while you could throw them in your party, they were more there just to put in your base so that they could offer, like, facilities and stuff. Like, you got get, like, a blacksmith character, and he would, like, help upgrade your weapons and whatnot. Oh, that's cool. Or you'd get, like, a it's, bomb yeah, have something similar. and he would, like, make you bombs and stuff for items. Yeah. So, like, some of them had a more supportive role as opposed to being, like, a you know, an actual frontline fighter. They would just be there to help um, you and stuff and make your uh, base better. Uh, what were you saying, Ricola? I'm saying, doesn't Dizkia have something like that where it's just kind of you recruit people for random crap? Yeah, yeah. Or, but that's yeah. also a bit different because that's a tactical RPG. So yeah. every character is a bit more useful in the sense that you... Like, that has even more playable characters at once than... Yeah, yeah, say, you, you, than you could like use you, everyone for fodder if you have to. Because, like, <laughs> that, you know, as you know, because that usually has, like, up to 10 to maybe 15 people in your... You know, party at once okay. during a fight, you know? Yes. I'm interested in a JRPG of a big party, though. Because that's awesome. So yeah. I more... You know, I'm you get multiple party it. members, and it's like, oh, I'm stuck with, like, three. As someone um, who is, guard, like... you know, sort of a fan of Suikoden, I enjoyed what I played of it. I never got around to finishing it. And I haven't played, you know, many Suikoden games just the one before I started with one so um, uh, but I did like it uh, and so I'm excited for this awesome so yeah. that's um, anything else anything from you Ricola yeah I didn't have much to say on these games I never played them but they looked very interesting from what I saw and Sounded pretty cool from what Black Chestnut explained to me, and just very now. visually pretty. Yeah, like, I was definitely. This game looks about. amazing. Like the, very flashy. It's gorgeous. They did an absolute perfect job on the visuals. But yeah, uh, so let's move on to the next game. Uh, I think the next and final one. Oh no, we got a couple more. Okay. So, yeah. So there's the Ascent, which is that snowboarding game. Right. That looked neat. Yeah. Um, Nothing too special. Just a snowboarding game. Um, yeah. Next one, they talked about Among Us. Coming to Xbox. Yep. Last console to get it. <laughs> it's also coming to Game Pass. I'm pretty sure, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, that makes sense. And actually, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. That was it. Yep. That's okay. the last thing. Oh. Well, because I there was we brought there up uh, red whatever it's called early that we didn't go out with much of a bang. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, that yeah. was that Those was all feelings on both Microsoft and Square. You know, I definitely yeah. Go ahead, you first, Ricola. Oh, uh, better than yesterday, probably. <laughs> Uh, to say. I don't know. I kind of feel... Some games I'm like interested in. Well, yeah, I'd say <laughs> overall better than yesterday. Maybe nothing I'm super excited for, but... Pretty terrible. But yeah. <laughs> Not great overall. I yeah. Feel like. Like, um... The Xbox One was okay. But it definitely... You know, but it's it's like it's the, I felt about the same of it that I feel about most of the Xbox E3 showcases, which it's like, yeah, that wasn't like the worst thing ever, but I'm not very impressed by it. It definitely wasn't the worst Xbox showcase, but honestly, shoving Xbox and Bethesda together, you know, and not having two separate showcases, I don't know. It kind, was definitely kind of a bad move. I wouldn't say it was a bad decision. Like, I think it was the right call for them. 
but it, I feel like it does take away stuff. I don't know. I'm still kind of mad about Microsoft buying Bethesda, honestly. I kind of feel like that should have been an illegal play. <laughs> <laughs> but my should opinion is... Let Microsoft what? buy Bethesda? What do you have Look how many devs Sony owns. Sony owns like 30 or 40 devs. Yeah, but that's <laughs> different. So. Those devs were massive publishers. It's the equivalent of Sony <laughs> buying Square Enix. <laughs> you know, it's like, I would not like that either. That would be terrible. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just it's bad for the industry. It's bad for the environment. It's bad for economics. Yeah. It's bad for us, the customers. It's probably bad for Bethesda as well. Honestly, yeah. I don't. I, I doubt it's bad for Bethesda. They got Microsoft's money. It could be down the line. Look what happened to Rare. True. Uh, true. But Bethesda. I, don't trust. I wouldn't trust. <laughs> I wouldn't sell somebody I knew to Microsoft. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't trust Microsoft with my firstborn son. <laughs> 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 my goodness. But my thought my thoughts well, I on think the rare situation is probably more complicated than just Microsoft buying them now. But let's not get into that, it's a bigger discussion. Yeah. Um and then the Square Enix one, uh That I'm was not... arguably even worse. I kinda of felt like fascinated that was by Final Fantasy, whatever the it's called. Honestly, the only thing that was in the Square One that I even came out happy about, even in the slightest, had to have been the Pixel remasters. You know, and that's just so we can get a Steam version of Final Fantasy VI and V that doesn't look like fucking dog shit. Right. You know. It's like, thank God for that. But, like, even that, it's like, they didn't even bother to put it on Switch. Maybe they will uh, in the future. But, yeah. Yeah, um, overall, my thoughts definitely agree that Bethesda, or Square Enix, not Bethesda, Square Enix had the weaker show today, um, Xbox, they actually showed some pretty okay stuff, wasn't the worst thing. As far as being better than yesterday, I would say it's about even, in my opinion, you know, nothing too special, yeah. not necessarily bad. Like, honestly, nothing excited me from either days, really. Yeah, nothing really just jumping out of my seats, like, holy shit, I am so pumped for this. Can't stop Summer talking. Summer Game Fest is still on top <laughs> so yeah. far. Yeah, honestly. Jeff Keighley actually had the best show so far. Yeah. You yeah. know? Like, honestly, Wonderful. I wouldn't be and surprised. And all he had was Elden Ring. Yeah. He had one game, and he had the best show. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the final you know yeah final. I think Nintendo will bring it at least enough to you know beat Xbox and Square you yeah know, they'll that's definitely literally be literally the lowest bar possible all yeah. they have to do is show more than 10 minutes of Breath of the Wild 2 and they've already won E3 pretty much yeah like honestly that's all they need to do if they don't then they better sure. hope to God that their presentation is just flawless I don't know Hopefully next year will be better for Xbox. I'm gonna be real about. No, I I I I totally bet Breath of the Wild 2 is not gonna show up. It's gonna be hilarious. Everyone's gonna. uh, It has to. Metro Dread 4, I'm actually pretty wary on because I just remembered that that completely scrapped development only two years ago. Yeah. Not even two years ago. It was like less than two years ago. Mm -hmm. So, but. If we don't, we'll, the river, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I'm not gonna be effect. upset if we don't see my, you know, I'm not gonna be upset if we don't see Metroid Prime Four. Right. Also, totally, I, I'm totally like, you know, Breath of Wild Two could totally not show up, and I won't even be surprised. <laughs> the ten percent weirder E3s. No, they're they're one hundred percent gonna show Breath of the Wild Two. They literally told us we're gonna see it sometime later this year. Yeah. And they're not gonna wait till fucking November to show us it. Right. When the game is going to come out next year. Yeah. 
Yeah, no. This is the best possible yeah. stage for them to reveal something as much as that. Yeah. Especially with such a low bar that they have to meet. <laughs> but, yeah. That was... It was our discussion on the presentations for Xbox and Square Enix that happened today. Um... Yeah, thank you yeah. for everybody who's watching. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure to follow us on YouTube. It really means a lot. Um, yeah, if you subscribe to us on YouTube. Yeah, then hit that bell like notification. The like the video. Yeah. <laughs> you know, check us out. A, a lot. It really helps the channel a ton. It helps us, you know, warrant doing more of this, essentially. <laughs> if you're enjoying this in any form, please do that because... Like, it gives us more of a reason to keep going. Yeah, because <laughs> don't get yeah. It's not. This isn't like. This is fun to do, and we just want to share our conversations on it because that's all everybody wants to do. But yeah, yeah. Make sure to follow us on Twitch. We stream every Monday. Um, we are also have a Twitter, which we basically tweet out every time we go live and post any updates yeah. to the channel that you may not have seen on YouTube or Twitch. But yes, thank you for watching and everybody have a great night. Yep. Bye.